County Commissioner. Work session. Work session. Well, it's Marshall. actually not a work session. It's, it's just um, it's a special meeting. It's a special meeting. Okay. On March 20th. We'll start with the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are having a special meeting about Park Lake and Dam, and I'm going to turn it over to Isaac because he knows what we're doing and introduce the two people who are online. Hey Brian, hey Curtis. Um, so we, we met last week and discussed uh, the two the two different bid packets that you guys had offered. That one was kind of your minimum requirement uh, recommendation there with the uh, invitation, the RFQ, the plans, the specs, and the design. And then you gave us another, a more detailed option um, that had all the above plus um, some construction provisions along with some contract clauses. And I believe the commission had a couple of questions um, kind of on that more detailed bid. Uh, and I guess if, if you guys could maybe answer, answer the questions that we have here, that would be great. Sounds good. <laughs> My apologies for being late. Uh, I think Isaac did a really good job lining it up. What are the questions the commission has? What the difference between the two bids? Yes. Is the biggest thing. Yes. Could you explain the difference between the two bids? Did you process it? Yes. Two okay, processes. So, so what we call, and this is Curtis. Um, what we call request for quotes is not a, necessarily a field bid with the public opening. You are simply just reaching it, reaching out to some contractors, giving them the, the bid schedule to bid on, and then giving them a date to return it by, and then you just evaluate the, the quotes. The other process is a, is a field bid where you would designated time and open for a bid opening and you would uh, receive the bids by that time open them in a public realm and then evaluate the low bidder okay i think one of our questions was when we if we get questioned by the state on what we're doing it's going to have to come back to somebody to answer those questions on on the process and so which one of those bids or both of them will you guys be responsible for on whichever way we go for you to answer to the state and let them know what we're doing um well actually i'm did you talk to your attorney about the requirements i know We've done this with watershed districts, and I'm thinking the number of fifty thousand dollars is where you are supposed to do field bids or at least three bids. Okay. Well, either of these bid processes impact uh, when we get farther down the road with core engineers and stream management and that sort of thing that we wouldn't have to you know would 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 the one bid process cover a lot of those questions that we wouldn't have to rehash again or pay additional for once we get get the dam fixed and then looking at what we have to do down the road uh, I don't think either process would be relevant to, I guess, that question. I, their rear requirements would be their requirements, irregardless of how 
he was bid out. Are both both options uh, coming with your oversight to make sure that uh, it, it's completed on time? It's uh, it's followed through and inspected to make sure the work is quality and, and to your spec. Correct. Yes. Yeah. It's it's simply just gathering the bids. Simplification is gathering the bids. Okay. Then, uh, there is a few more contract documents where you have an official contract between the contractor and the county in the second process, but you could also incorporate any kind of agreement in that first process as well. And both both would require bid bonding? Um, the first one doesn't necessarily say that, I don't think. I can't recall. No, I, I don't think the first one would require a bid bond, but we would want a payment performance bond on either one, and I think we could require a payment performance bond, which is for the actual work, not for the bid itself. Correct, yeah. The, first, the second process asked, also asked for a bid bond. But, uh, the first is uh, it's simply more or less a, just a quick version of a field bid opening, but you still can require contract with a contractor and require bonding and such. Do I ask a question? Yes, please. <laughs> do we know, do we have a, um, an estimate, an engineer's estimate of the cost at this point? Do you have a, just a rough estimate of what it's going to be? Has that changed drastically since the last time? It went up a little bit due to the we in our design we came up with more tons of rock. I would give you a range of seventy five thousand, one hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Range. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I hesitate in a public meeting to give an engineer estimate out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, the only Good. reason I asked the question is because if it's over a certain amount, you know, uh, if it's I mean, at 150,000, uh, uh, the process might be would, would potentially be it, adequate it to do to do the first process, but require a payment performance bond to the contract, okay. to the contract for the contract, <clears throat> and then the, you know, but if it was much over that 150 mark, you you probably want to go to the more in depth, but then you also add more expenses on the engineering side to drop those bid packets and on the bids themselves because you would require a, a bid bond so they would have to sort of they'd have to get that get plus the payment performance okay. bond so so <laughs> at for at a cost of $150,000 contract approximately or even up to 200,000 I mean you would probably be okay with the first process but going beyond that you know, okay. if it's going to be a much more involved and more, more expensive project, then you would want the more detailed bid spec. Okay. So, in my opinion, I mean, you would be comfortable with the first option. Is, that, is there an option of um, if we did the quotes and it came back just clear out of the park as far as what was being expected, that we could do the more detailed bid process if we needed to? Yeah, I don't. I don't believe you'd be obligated to pick anybody in either process actually right so uh, and it also is going to depend as of right now you're not looking at any kind of federal or state funding mm -hmm. you're looking at paying that out of risk management right. if you go with federal or state funding then you would need the more you could would potentially need the more in-depth process but if it, what he's saying is you could potentially do that you know you could reject everything on the first one and go back out if you had to if it was way high yeah. so. I, I think that's probably what dic dictates your methodology is the, where the funding is coming from yes I guess I'm ready to go ahead and do the try the first one and, and see what it comes in at and if we, we're not happy then we'll make the final decision that whether we have to go farther I guess okay that be a motion? I'd make that motion, yes. Okay. Right. Second. 
Do you have a question? Make sure that first option is um, also the payment performance bond. Asking for because right. they'll, they'll they'll have to know that when they provide quotes because they'll they'll have to have to figure out what that bond rate is. Okay. But that's insurance for us and we need to make sure we have that. Okay. Yeah, very good. <coughs> that's my addition on my motion that we do have the payments performance bond with this for this process. Very good. No second. Okay, we have a second. A motion by Commissioner Dawkey, second by Commissioner Gary. Discussion. Did you have something online? I did I would uh ask about your the timetable I put in there is already uh, passed you might say okay the, the, we would have to adjust that accordingly yeah we're not looking at any documents here so we don't know what that it was it was okay I we got I just threw in dates not knowing any better a request the quote by March 2nd uh, well yeah, the send it out March 2nd request to close by March 31, start work by April 10, and complete work by May 10. Yeah. Um, we'll be back a month. Yeah, we, we're probably we'll talking about 30 minutes and everything up a month. Agreeable. Yeah, I've got, got <laughs> consensus from the commission for that. Any other discussion or questions? If do you not, have contractors that you want us to send it to? Um, we have talked to a few of our contractors that do watershed work for us, and they we have a couple that are interested, but didn't know how you wanted it to be distributed. I would I would request that any of our local contractors have a, a shot at it. So I think um, if commissioners have specific ones, please give me a list and I'll send it to Brian in addition to the ones that he, that typically do the watershed work. Um, and, and I don't know, I've talked to a couple of people that said just to see if they would be, and I know a couple that would be interested as well. Okay, so um, if you can give me that information yeah. here pretty soon, and then I'll send it to Brian by tomorrow. Excellent, so get that information to Tina by tomorrow. Um, and then also, obviously, it sounds like there's gonna be multiple. I was just gonna say, we need to make sure we would send it to at least three contractors. Yes, so, for our policy. So, okay. Any other questions or discussion? I, are you still online? Yes. Are you good with receiving these quotes in your office? Uh, typically, they would come to the county clerk's okay. office. But okay, I I can change that as well. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, Tina will get that information to you also. How about directing any questions? Isaac, would you want to be a contact point? Or? Yeah, I can definitely do that. Okay. Any other questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 5-0. Do we have a direction? Thank you, gentlemen, for being online with us this morning. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We still will have a, a county permit required, which um, Sharon will help to develop that county permit and make sure that we have that all done. Okay, good. Very good. Anything else on the, the dam issue? There's a, both, the, they had, the, this will suffice the, the plan. Yes. For the future. As far as uh, no, no. This, this, is, this, this is just the day. This, this is just, just the day. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Anything else is going to be additional. Any other questions? Anything else we need to wrap up on that part? All right. Then we'll move into your next topic. I think. Okay. We're done with these guys. Yes, again, we appreciate you being <laughs> online. We'll let you get back to work, and thanks for all of your assistance. All right, thank all right. you, guys. Goodbye. Bye. We're all set. All. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Get out of the kitty in there. <laughs>
Metro. <laughs> That's above our inflation rate. Okay. Maybe it'll still be seven five. Next, um, last week we talked about those price sheets. Um, I think Tina sent them out. Yes. Yeah. If anybody needs a hard copy, I do have those here. Okay, so just kind of to explain what I did here, um, you can tell some of these have the, the red font there off to the left. So that red font would be all of them that we have changed. The regular pricing in black, that is what we changed it to. The ones that we did change, the old pricing is in red um, at the end there. So I guess to go down the line here, we we have a lake hall rental that half the hall went from 50 to 75. Um, and then we have half hall all day, whole hall half day was 100. That would be up uh, to 150. And then the whole hall all day would go from 200 to 300. Um, after that, from the shelter house rental, we took the $5 half day option just out, just $10 to reserve that for the day. Um, golf cart permit went from 40 a year to 50 a year. Uh, we didn't have any, any changes on our disc golf rental or our primitive camping. Uh, the camping with electric and water county residence is going to go from $13 a night to $14 a night. Non-county resident will go from $14 a night to $18 a night. Um, with the annual camping permits, we did not change the price of the annual camping permit, just the nightly rate with that annual permit, and that was gonna go from $6 to $8. Um, the non-county, we jumped that up from $125 a year to $150 a year, and then that would also come with the change of a nightly rate from $7 a night to $10 a night. And then the one last thing that we had changed here was for our boat and RV storage out, out on the back side of the lake there, and that's gonna go from $15 a month up to $20 a month. And I believe those were all the changes that we discussed here um, at our work session, and, and I just wanted to see if, if we were all on board for that or if there was anything else that we wanted to look at or possibly, possibly address. On the boat and RV storage, you have to commit so we have not we have not done that and and I will say just two years ago we went back through uh, it used to kind of be a free-for-all and we turned it into slips and and it's helped tremendously with us to keep track of what's coming in and what's going out and, and that kind of thing but uh, right now we've been doing just a monthly basis if, if payments up and it's gone that spot comes back open um, and that's that's how we've been operating. Now, some people do pay a year at a time. Some people pay six months at a time, you know, a summer season at a time, and then they don't want it over the winter. Some people pay for the whole year so they know when they, they're gonna have that spot have next yeah, when they come back next spring. But, uh, and that that's something that, that could be discussed, but as of now, we've just been doing it, doing it on a monthly basis and letting them decide how long, how long they want to pay. It works for you. Yeah. Is, is there any signed agreements? No. And I, that's something I don't know if it would be worth having, uh, but there's not. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder with us doing something like this, whether Brad ought to put something together for case of storms, whatever, damage. That there, we there are needs to be you, you probably should have something <laughs> on the file, but at this point, if there aren't any people that have signed agreements, what, Doing a, a rate increase would be okay right. if you decide that you're going to do a, a different process right. in the future. Dr. Okay. So add, add that to Brad. So that's nice. Thing. Yeah, I think you have a long list to start at the rate. And he like a, on that, I still have those two RVs oh. in that storage yes. uh, that uh, I would like to get taken care yes. of. We need to put them on the sheriff's sale when he sells his vehicles. <laughs> so what you're saying is, along with along with the rental, the along with the rental agreement, we should have a hold harm hold harmless agreement, 
you know, that we're not liable for the right. damage to their whatever RV boat. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I think that could be a fairly simple, you know, that they they sign. Oh yeah, if the tree falls on us, turn around, fall. Wind, whatever, whatever. It's many years that it's been, and it's not been an issue. You don't think about it, but then it's right happen. away it'll be an issue. Yeah. It's going to happen the day before it's signed. That's a good idea. Other questions on the rate increases, proposed rate increases? Do we have any idea based on our prior numbers how much additional revenue this might produce? I mean, Five percent additional over the past year. I mean, yeah. I mean, you kind of look at it and say, if the numbers are the same, you might have a five percent increase in revenue. Or and something. I will reflect toward expenses. I mean, we're just trying to keep up with our utility expenses. And I will say, without without any rate increases on that revenue report, we've gone up. I mean, percentage wise, I don't have that down, but we've been averaging anywhere from. Five to eight thousand a year since 2017. I mean, it's it's just gotten busier and busier and busier. Um, but as far as percentage goes, I do not have that. But no, I do know the revenue that for just this, just the county permits here, has gone up every year since 17. And I don't know the last time there was a rate increase, but it kind of shows that business has been mm -hmm. increasing. Good, good question. Other questions? Yes. I had a question um, on on the lake hall rental, and just yes. this is just I guess how to address the the situation on the on the price changing, because right now we've we booked that thing out two to three years in advance. Oh my. And so I have a bunch of people that have booked in a right a price that we've told right. them when they've signed that, and I guess my question would be. Uh, if the commute, if we have them in the book, if we should keep the existing rate, or if I should contact all those people and just let them know, hey, this is our situation here, this is changing, um, because that was something I know is going to get brought up. Sometimes, if we change, they're right. going to show up and say, you guys told me it was fifty, now it's seventy-five, and right. I think grandfather rule apply. What, what about everything in two thousand twenty-three stays the same? Within 24, 25, the rate's going to go up. But I mean, that gives them 12 months notice. I thought we were going to raise the rate next month. Yeah, That's what I mean. If, they, if it's already booked, you've got to honor that. Yeah, yeah. If, it's, if it's booked, it's kind of grandfathered, I would guess. And see, and that wouldn't be hard for me to do because I could go through my calendar and mark say, down if all you, the If you have the information yeah. on it, you'd know. Yes. And we can mark who's already scheduled by this point. And then <coughs> move from there, and that's I guess was my question is is if we should do that or do you, do you have ten people or twenty people? Well, I'm reading just I'm booked for go shopping for the next year or two. Go shopping. I don't I don't get the same rate that when I go shopping. So I, you know what those that are those that are more than a year. Well, I just I'd kind of I, I don't know. I, I got a trailer on order a year ago, and I'm furious if they raise the rate on me when I when I bought that trailer, I put it in the lineup, it's coming out of the lineup. But that's that's different. It's the same. Rent goes up all the time. Yeah, but you can't. I mean, if, if you schedule a room in a hotel, they'll stick it to you on the next year's rate. Yeah, but that you haven't booked for the next year yet. Yeah, I mean, even if you booked it, you book a meeting room two years out, you're going to pay the going rate of that year. I, I, I see what you're. I, I, mean, I understand what you're saying. Six to one half beds, but I sure in the heck wouldn't let it. If I went anything, it'd be this year. Be the last year for that rate. I mean, we. How many do you have? In ten or for thirty people? For twenty twenty three or moved after this year. Yeah, advance rating. I mean, for twenty four and twenty five. Not very many. Like most of them, like the class old Southern's Day class reunion weekends. Uh, okay. Some of them are like Memorial weekends, I'd, things like that. I'd say we and honor after twenty three. I do not I'd say honor this year and say yeah, that's that not going to be that rate. <laughs> I, I would be yeah. game with that. 
okay, so a, a grandfather for this year. One year. This year. Yeah. And for what? Well, just for 23. My uh, grandfather. Not any current year from now. now. Anything he has on the books now for grandfather. Well, I'm, I'm getting several different reads here. <laughs> I'd say just for 23. And I'm getting the grandfather for all. I'm 23 only. All right, well then, then let's have a motion from someone. We'll see where it falls out. Make a motion to hold the rates for any bookings that you have for 2023, but as affecting 2024, the rates will go up for those ones that's already, that are already. That's already booked. Can we roll into your motion to in, when do these rates go into effect for those that don't have bookings? And I would, I would also add that the rates that we've decided on that goes into effect immediately the first of the month. For April. April. Yes. Okay, is there a second to his motion? Second. second by Commissioner Becker. Discussion? Been an interesting discussion. <laughs> Talking big dollars here. That's right. That's right. But we want to be fair. We want we want to still honor as much as we can commitments that are made, but at the same time recognize there are going to be some. There we have, we are paying higher rates for expenses that have to be passed. Electricity, on. Man, AC. Yeah, yeah. So all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Aye. Motion carried four to one. And who was the second? Becker. Sorry. Somebody did. Motion by Dawkey, second by Becker. Sorry, I was still trying to write. Yeah. Trying to and I didn't see. repeat this time. Sorry. Okay. I got it. All right. So we've got a, an effective date of the new rates of April 1st. Those that have already made reservations are grandfathered till the end of this year. And so then the new rates take effect for those who already have commitments on the 1st of 2024. <coughs> is the commission going to take action to adopt these all these new rates? I think you just did the oh, new call. Oh, the effective rate. We have to adopt the rates. We got to park before the horse. Oh, my. Well, would there be a motion to affect the new rates that effective uh, April, April 1st? 1st. So yeah. motion. motion by Commissioner Gary. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Crofin. Discussion on the rates. We were so wrapped up in the effective. <laughs> I didn't see any controversy in the rates. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carried 5 0. Sorry about getting the cart before the horse. But that was the discussions on the effective date, grandfathers. We got there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good job, I'd say. <laughs> and then my last order of business uh, the mower bids. Yes. So things actually got a little more interesting. Oh. <laughs> and when I went back out after our meeting on Monday, I went over to Durham um, and spoke with them. I got a bid. Okay. I also reached out to all of our bidders to yeah. see if they wanted to rebid or just accept the right. same bid. Right. And it turns out the, the 2S Outdoors over in Hillsboro, between the first bid and the second bid, they are now a grasshopper dealer as well oh. as a Graverly dealer. Oh. So there is also going to be a grasshopper bid in here from them. Um, I guess the paperwork got signed grasshopper in between the first and the second bids. So we now have like five, five. Uh, <laughs> bids. See? And at the bottom of these, uh, capital, that's capitalism. That's capitalism. We'll give you this uh, one. Capitalism. <laughs> Chocolate up for kids. And at the bottom of this, uh, it's handwritten uh, by me, but that will be the warranty for each mower. Okay. Um, on on what they offer uh, as far as <clears throat> as far as warranties go. Excellent. Does the rest offer you the same engine? No. I'll share with you. Yes, that is the only one. That is actually the only one in this bid packet. It is their. It is there pretty much, it's the same size, same size of engine, just not, it's not a Kawasaki, it's a Vanguard big block, which I believe is, is on air still. And the only other difference between those two is that the Grasshopper does not offer a true 60 inch, it's a 61 inch, but it's, it's their closest, I guess, model to, to what this is looking for. Okay, you have, you have a preference on the heaviest weight or durable durability? So, 
I will say, so, and, and you know, when I called them, I got these bids, I got a lot of information as far as uh, service and parts and everything like that. Um, pretty much all of these uh, bidders do offer service. Um, I will say we have done work. We've had hustlers. We've worked with Hustler for, well, since I've been here, and I think quite a while before that um, and it's been fantastic uh, if we ever have a problem they get us in there they get us our mowers back and they get back out right away uh, you know I've talked to some other people I know you know I personally don't have any experience with any any of the other mowers uh, I know the school district I talked to some they switched to the John Deere they said that they loved it um, I've heard I've heard good things I think out at the reservoir, they use the grasshopper, and they have it. They said that they enjoy that. The grasshopper is a little different than the other four because it's a mid mount, but it has a rear dish charge. It actually has four blades instead of three, uh, and instead of shooting the grass out the side, it spreads it out the back. Uh, the only other difference there, the grasshopper, is, is it does not. All the other four have a Kawasaki FX1000 motor, whereas that grasshopper has a Vanguard big block. Um, same same horsepower, same size. It's just it's just the Vanguard instead of the Kawasaki. But um, yeah, I know I know that. I mean, since I've been there, all all we've ever dealt with is is Hustler, and I mean it. Yeah, I see on this bit, Isaac. Uh, that their wheel tires is included with, for this sixteen thousand. Yes, yes. For, for some of the others. For like, who? For for Ag Power. Yes. The others is extra. So well, wait a minute. There's GNR's thousand. They got a thousand figured in there probably. Yeah. Yeah. There's so there's wheel tires. All of no, not they all say all of the bids should include the wheel the wheel oh, okay. tires. difference here is where it goes from that 13 down to the 14. Oh, okay, yeah, the 13 yeah, down to yeah, the 1,000, yeah. okay, 14. Okay. 3,000 hours is quite a bit of difference, though, on the warranty. Yes. How many hours do you have on the one that you have there now? The, the, the big, my big one or my small one? Well, it doesn't matter. So my, my small one's at about 48. That's uh, a lot of hours. <laughs> yeah. And which I, that I guess brings up a Another question next is we do have that small mower, which was going to be what I asked next, I guess, as far as far as what we want to do with it. Um, I, I've talked to some people about trade-in value. I didn't know if there'd be another department. I mean, it runs, everything works on it, uh, seal, seal bids or what, but I know that. Wherever you haul it to, to help other departments is probably where I would store it. <laughs> Well, that's I know yeah, you so don't have to load it. To use it. You can just run over there and jump on it, and deal yeah. with it. Yeah, I feel that we need it out of our new beauty shop, where we're calling that new annex office, because it's quite. I'd say if it's mechanically okay, it runs. Just keep it. <laughs> well, and that's and that's it. it. We two years ago we had that issue, and and we got the engine rebuilt, and I mean it. It runs. It's it's. Oh, so it doesn't actually have forty eight hundred hours on it then. It yeah, it does. It wasn't it wasn't completely rebuilt. They, oh, they, yeah, they just had to do some pretty pretty serious overhaul work to it. But right now, uh, Isaac has to bring a mower in to mow the EMS building. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, that's that, a good place. And for that it. takes you three hours. Yeah, or two. I mean, yeah, not you know I didn't know if they had a place for it out there, but uh, if so, that'd be. I personally have a grasshopper and I personally run XLs too, Hustlers, and well, both of them are good. I have had the pleasure of running. I know, like I said, 
friend of mine has a country clipper. That's what he lives by because he just wants, I think they have a single. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's the other thing is yeah. that's the only big difference of that country. It's a it's a joystick control yes. instead of a lever, like a double yeah. lever control. Yeah, but if you've ever run one of those, I have might not. not go back. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> sit there and drink your coffee. <laughs> Single, single lever joystick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can imagine that. But then the durability and speed that I know I can't, I can mow with a husband a lot quicker, get a lot more done than I can in my grass hopper. I've got a 61 inch. Well, I think the 1500, extra 1500 hours worth of warranty. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it's, it's it has a lot of value. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, it's kind of silly, but I mean, out of any piece of equipment that we have out there, nothing gets run like these i mean it's yeah. it's five hours it's or it's eight hours a day five days a week yeah. and it's not it's not what i want to say mowing residential terrain it's not either. mowing your yard yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of rock yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty what, it's pretty serious what do you think you put on in a year on a mower hour wise <laughs> i mean i know that i i put about 300 to 400. yeah uh well and between the two of between the two that we run, I would say it's anywhere from eight hundred to almost a thousand. That's both of them together. Per per. Which right now we've been running that small one that we have. We've kind of every once in a while we'll get two running and, and somebody will be on the small one. But we like last year we tried to run that big one and only that big one where we can. But like campgrounds and things, that smaller one at times comes at handy just because it's easier to get around everything but uh yeah uh i would say well like last year i think we put a little under a thousand on our big one and we put 400 and something on our small one there's a reason that. so it's not gonna make five years then. no it'll hit that <laughs> it'll probably hit the hours before it hits the years i think okay would your recommendation be the hustler Probably, yeah. Because of the durability yeah. and the excess, or the, the, the longest warning. Any other discussion from the commission? Would there be a motion? I'd make a motion that we purchased a Hustler mower of Ag Power for $16,090.10. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Crofa, second from Commissioner Balky to go with the bid from Ag Power on the Hustler mower. Discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carried 5 0. So the quality doesn't change since it's sold out. Yes. Uh, I, hope, I hope not. Would, you, would I contact maybe EMS for that small mower or uh, what? I spoke, how would the Tina, how would the process from? The and I mean, I can hold on to it for as long as I need to hold on to it. I just, there's no place to store it. In the corner of the building? Not, just outside? <coughs> no, inside. <laughs> no. no. I, I, should, should Isaac talk to Kurt? Well, that's um, Kurt and Bryce. Bryce needs to know. Cool. Where's Bill? Uh, I'll figure it out. I'll hold I can hold on to it for as long as Yeah, I think you probably will have to hold on to it. That's fine. Yeah, summertime. Under the awning. As long as that's what we want to do with it. There's that roof that goes off that spot. I think there's more people involved in that conversation. Okay. We'd like to stay in it out there. Yeah. Make sure everybody's in the loop. Okay. We don't have anybody with the North Campus frustration. That's why I'm taking it nationwide. That works. Get a little jumpy about what the quality is going to be going down the road. You know, that's the first thing we look at is cost. Yeah. All right, we got the lawnmower project. Next. That was it for me today. Okay. Unless you guys had any questions or anything, anything else for me? Anything else for Isaac? Back <laughs> behind you now. Oh, okay. He looked in the ceiling tiles for the lake hole and something. Yes. Uh, over visiting? We definitely have. And I think we're kind of in a spot because the ones that we have in there right now, 
I'm having a very hard time finding the exact tile. So it's kind of sitting between replacing our damaged ones with a very similar but kind of different design tile or just going back and replacing absolutely everything. And next winter would be a good time to well, replace and that's everything. It. Probably. And I know I'm looking at possibly trying to see for the flooring as well because one half. I don't know what the conversation of when that happened, but one half, all that paint was buffed off, and the north half is not. And so, with that, it, I mean, it's chipping up real bad and everything, and what I'd like to do is just get that paint off of there. It's polished concrete, and, and where they did that on the south hall, it, look, it looks 100 times better than, than that north hall, and there's just a straight line down there. And then just to get that paint chipped off uh, and polished is something we've been looking at doing as well. But yeah, the ceiling tile thing, I've been looking at prices, but that's been my biggest hold up is, is the ones that are on there right now. We well, yeah. are having a hard time finding the exact same ones. Probably 20 years old. Nobody yeah. looks at the ceiling. <laughs> I thought we did some Unless there's a big hole up there. It's white. Yeah, it's white. Well, I'll tell you, there are, there are about, and that's probably true, because there's about 30 of them up in the upstairs of our shop. Uh, Lobs that lob area, yeah. yeah, and there's about three bags there. And That's brand new. They were at some point. They were at some point. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, they're they're still in the packaging. I don't know when those were from, but they they are the same ones that I have in my lake office. I, I'm just wondering if you, if you did a half at a time, right? Take, take yeah, the half right. and put the good ones out of the that you take the out one, and the other half, the other side, and then. Yeah. Do one side, and I don't know, it's just an idea, unless you want to do it all. So from a women's point of view, what do you think? I think that uh, your lake hall is great. You need to redo the floors, the ceilings, yeah. and the bathrooms. Those bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> um, a total remodel, in other words. No. <laughs> it can be phased. Phase. We, phase we, we did upgrade all the toilets. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So that was a start. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 100%. The other thing that I really would like to get looked at are the appliances in the kitchen. Uh, we have issues with the ovens from time to time, and so, yeah. I think I'll, if you're just doing little things every year, to, you know, keep, yeah, where you're not spending yeah, a lot of money, yeah, but you're keeping it up, that's yeah, helpful. Yep. Yeah. Those ovens can't burn commercial, or they? No. They're rent, they're still yeah. little. They're, and from they're probably donated. Somebody. Yes, that's all. <laughs> both of them are. Both of them are. Need to make sure people turn that heat down, though. We walked in there yesterday afternoon, and boy, it was up to about 77 degrees. You got you got Wi-Fi in there? Yes, we you did. We did, did ground hold. Okay, yeah, because we did. We just got Wi-Fi in there last year, yeah. uh, and with that, we got two smart TVs put up in there, so people can now run PowerPoints and things like that. Can as well. you adjust that from the office? Then? Yeah, from I mean, ground hold. And then you can also set time of day, you know, and it'll. I'm sure you wouldn't have to go over there. Yeah. And that way you can also key it in when somebody's going to come, then you come know, in a few hours it. earlier yeah. and it starts warming it up. What's that called? For groundable thermostat. Call Matt. Call Matt. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he, he hooked up mine. He hooked up the one at the shop. I don't know. He, well, it'd make it handy that he wouldn't have to come out when everybody leaves at night. He could get up and turn it down. So if you want to leave early. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there long enough. Shut it down. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> Usually you got to turn it up. Yeah, <laughs> cook them around. <laughs> no, that's a good. Those things are so reasonable. It's yeah, ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, probably on the, the the lake hall. Keep looking at ways to phase in improvements. It, it is. It's, it's a real asset. It's, it's used good. a lot. Yep. yep. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank Anything you. else, Isaac? No. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. All right. We have our land bank meeting in 15 minutes. And is there anything else you want to bring up on commission, or do we adjourn, or do we recess? Um, I think you should adjourn this special meeting Since for Park. Okay. And. Um, 
then All right. open the land bank at 11.30. Make a motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Three. Lofi to adjourn. Second from Commissioner Becker. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carried. We are adjourned with our special meeting on the park. <clears throat>